Welcome and thank you for joining me today in this new format. My name is Luca Folco and I am the R&D manager of Seven Refractories. Not only the format of the presentation is new, but also the content. So let me jump right into our new concept for steel ladle management and what it means in terms of the technology, environment and of course finance. Although it may be thought that the ladle is a simply container for the transport of the steel within the steel mill, in reality its role is central to the modern production cycle. The steel ladle is the only means of transportation, and the steel is obviously hot and sensitive to many issues. In scientific words uh, we can say thermo, chemical, mechanical stresses. In our everyday language is translated in all kinds of adages for the plant manager. Here we help uh, with the new concept. Secondary metallurgy is one of the main functions of the steel plant, and it performs a big variation of tasks, taking away unwanted components, decarbonization, desulfurization, dephosphorization, deoxidation, degassing, removal of trace elements and inclusion, and delicate balancing, for example, for alloys or concentration of elements. And that's not even the full list. As refractory experts, we believe we have guardian role. Our materials protect from all kinds of attacks, chemical ones, thermal ones, mechanical ones. For each situation, we recommend the right mix and the right category of refractories, so pre-shaped bricks or monolithics of different chemical composition. In performing this guardian role, refractories have to fulfill tons of requirements. In principle, we can summarize and say, prevent all kinds of attacks and do this in a technical and financially optimal way. Just to give an idea about this complexity, here is a list of the most common refractory line requirements based on a subjective statement expressed by several steel shop managers. So what is happening today that is so different? Up to recently, bricks were the main solution. They were cheap, they were available, they did the job. Installation took a bit longer, but was not a big problem. But since bricks have become much more expensive, better solutions have been shifted into the FOX, especially since the availability of bricks was not so reliable anymore. So why not go for the new solution that is technically better, a little bit more expensive, but not too much, and predictable? This is the big shift that we are helping along. So goodbye to bricks and hello to better solutions, monolithic solutions. What is better about them? In principle, it comes down to the fact that monolithics allow for much more flexibility and security. They can be installed more or less endlessly. You don't do a complete repair, like taking out all old bricks and putting in new ones. You only repair where it is needed. You have a smooth surface and no joints. This is good because every gap is a potential headache. In addition, monolithics are easy to install and to store. So how is this done? As a standard, the monolithic materials are installed as vibrating or self-flowing castables, either for the wall ladle or for only a part, either on the bottom or also on the side walls. On the side walls you need a mold, but not on the bottom, highly flexible according to the needs of the factory. Let me get excited about shot creating. This is highly innovative technique. In very simple words, what you do is this. You put in a thin layer of material onto the existing brick lining. Right, you work with the stuff that is already there. You can do this several times until you reach the thickness you need. You only replace the bricks when absolutely needed, quite cost efficient and environmentally friendly. You don't need the mold and you don't have all the cost of mold brings with it. How is shot creating done? The castable is sprayed onto the surface with high pressure. It sets almost immediately. The good thing, you can do this more or less anywhere, regardless of geometry, so no one of the problems you can have with bricks that don't fit your situation. From result, the performance is technically the same as with the standard procedure. The graph shows you how this works. On top, the refractory material comes in. It is mixed with water or another mixing medium. Then we pump it to the place where it is installed. We use a high power double piston pump to push the mix through the pipeline system. At the end, compressed air helps us to apply the mix onto the application surface. 
A binder or accelerator makes sure that this goes fast, so that the mix sets quickly when reaching the surface. Shotcreting is not a new technique itself, but new for the steel ladle lining. What makes it better there? The three advantages you see. Longer campaigns, less material used, keeping existing bricks. All translated into one main advantage, cost savings. Let's look uh, at an example now. The repairs uh, follow the same structure. First you perform a new brick lining, then you go through a number of heats, afterwards you take the ladder out of service, change the slag line bricks. Next, the second part of the campaign where you usually have more heats. And finally you take the ladle out of service, take out the bricks and start again. Here is an example, where you can see in detail the most important steps. After the first run of it, uh, we clean the application surface, perform the necessary shot creating and heat up again. After the second run of it, uh, we do not, like normal, take out the complete brick lining. We keep it, and we shot create on top of it, heat up again. So this saves cost, it saves time, and it is environmentally friendly. In principle, you can repeat phase 4 forever and ever. Take the ladle out of operation, shock grid what is needed, heat up again. This also works to protect the existing brick structure. This example shows a very typical application in practice. After the first brick installation, you do your heating runs, and in between each run, a shock grid application between 40 and 50 millimeters, potentially going on forever. So, you make the monolithic protection layer do the work. You check where you need to repair, apply the shot creating there, and use a minimal material. The cost reduction is obvious, and there is no compromise on safety or reliability. So, this is what it looks like. You can see the application of the material with a high pressure. Here in this video, we are observing the shot creating. This is important to get the right amount of material at the right speed and the right pressure. You want the castable to stick to the side more or less immediately, and it has to stick in a reliable way. You can see also very well that there is only little rebound, so not much material is wasted, which is an advantage for the factory manager. All in all, this offers a very clean and fast procedure, in comparison to take away bricks every time. And this is what it looks like afterwards. Nice and smooth. On top you can clearly see the existing brick structure. And in the lower part you can distinguish the bricks underneath the monolithic layer. They are there, they keep the structure, but they don't have to do heavy work of taking all the attacks. But that's not all. We also perform two more functions. Before we shot create, we clean the existing brick lining. After we have done the shot creating, we heat up the new lining. Some words about cleaning. The better this job is done, the better the total results. Normally we take away leftovers with manual tools. Hammers, chisels, small pneumatic hammers. It is also possible to use mechanical devices properly engineered for the scope. But why do we clean? Because we want the material to stick perfectly when we apply it, and the contact must be done without residual slag interface. We don't want it come off at a later stage. Now about the eating phase, when it gets interesting. It follows a precisely designed curve of which you can see an example here. During the heating up, we measure and follow the temperature and the flow of the fuel and combustion. As for the chemistry, we have to ensure that the brick line is compatible with the shot creating layers. Normally we handle magnesia carbon or alumina magnesia carbon bricks, while the shot creating castable are based on alumina spinel. In the end you get highly resistant result. Even when exposed it to the heat, uh, there is low erosion and corrosion. You can use this until the slag line bricks are worn out, keeping in mind uh, that the sidewall is the weakest point in the process. Here you see a typical technical datasheet. 
It summarized the key characteristics and component of one type of castable we use for shot creating or vibrating. Over time, we have run different series of shot creating applications. These we adjust to the condition at hand. What they do need at the moment, how many ladles in operation, what are the campaign targets? What we achieved. The table summarized the results after one year. On average, we increased the number of hits by 22%. This is highly significant and valuable. The average increase in tons is over 4,000 tons, sometimes even over 8,000. And the average we achieve is 115 hits, sometimes even 151. All in all, this sums up to a big advantage for the steel factory. So, after one year, we can say the following. The method is effective and reliable. Campaign life is significantly longer. The client is happy. Less cost, less specific consumption. And overall, the technology provides a valuable alternative. In many cases, it is more suitable for the specific technical situation and also economically better. Thank you very much for your attention.